Okay, welcome back. So we were looking at goal setting and then we moved into action. So the first thing that we said is once we've identified the goals, how do we, um, uh, how do we uh, ensure that we establish those goals? And in Dennis's case, we set two goals. One is um, going for rehabilitation or you know, stopping his drinking and the second goal was to change his thoughts, okay? Now, even as you are going ahead with working with action, uh, especially when you know, you're formulating a plan, you also need to help them, help your counselee, find ways of how they can be reinforced for their, so for their action. For example, Dennis decided that he wants to quit drinking, right? So while you're doing that, you're also developing certain reward systems or certain reinforcements. And in his case, maybe the conversation is about finding people who can support him in that journey, right? Supporting him in the journey of being able to stop his alcohol. Or it may be in finding a partner, an accountability partner who he can go alongside with, uh, who will help him uh, ensure that he's going for that rehabilitation program or going to the doctor or going for those group meetings, right? And uh, a way that you can also, as a counselor, be able to review of what his progress is and maybe some kind of a reward. Now, reward doesn't mean you give him a uh, chocolate or a thing. It can also, it can just be, uh, you know, be, uh, acknowledging that he's making that progress, that he has not drank for two weeks or three weeks when he comes to meet you. It's just acknowledging. So reinforcing, you have to develop reinforcement so that they are motivated to continue to stick on. Like, for example, if the person, let's say Dennis came to you two weeks later and said, you know, out of the 12, 14 days, I drank two days, but 12 days, I didn't. So what should we focus on? Yeah, so the fact that he was able to do the 12 days rather than why didn't you do the two days also, okay? But like you may help him say, okay, for 12 days you didn't. What helped you on those 12 days, right? So you are building that reinforcement of those 12 days and not really paying too much of attention on those two days. But you can also ask, I mean, did anything different happen on those two days? So if you wanted to make the two days also better, what could you do? So you're basically, the, you're helping for a reinforcement. All right? So that's what you would do on. So action doesn't mean, OK, Dennis, you decided to stop stop drinking. Good. Let us go. Goodbye, Tata. No. Right? So you say, okay, maybe after two weeks, we'll meet again to see what your progress is, which means you may need to hold contact with them for some time. All right, till the point. Yeah. You can text and say, how are you doing? How has the week been? That you, you can definitely do, right? So, so that's what I'm saying is that once you get the action plan, you don't let go of them. You see them through for some time till they feel maybe confident to manage things on their own. So that may be different for different people, right? So now in Dennis's case, it's an addiction, but in somebody else's case, it may be something else, right? Hmm. They stop the council. You, you can't force someone to come if they don't want to come. No? You can tell them. You say, would you like to meet? So they may say, okay, I think I got my answer. I should stop answer. I say, then you can suggest. You can say, you know, it may be, well, do you think it'll be helpful that we can meet and, you know, uh, see how the progress has been and uh, walk you through it for some time? You can suggest that. Right? If they say no, it's up to them. If they say no, they say no. Okay? So over here, what did Dennis do? Dennis actually found an accountability partner. And he found a friend who could call him at any point of time in a day to ask him how he was doing. So this is what Dennis did. All right. He said, uh, I'd like to find someone who will help me through this. And he said, if I stay clean for two weeks, then I will go for a movie with my friends. That was his reward. That was the, <laughs> that was the reinforcement that, uh, that he had. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. So, okay. So, Francis. <laughs> so, um, followed what I said? Yeah. Are you here? Mostly. <laughs> okay. We are having an inner joke here. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, next is um, you're preparing him to implement the steps. So, this is what. You may have discussed about what the action is. Then you prepare him. How is he going to implement those steps? Who is he going to talk to? Which friend is it going to be? After two two weeks, who's going to go out with him? So you so you're really looking at how what does he need? What are the resources he needs physically, emotionally, intellectually to perform each step? Maybe physically he may need to call up some rehabilitation centers, or emotionally. He may say every time, let's say, a rehabilitation center rejects him, how is he going to cope with that rejection, right? Or intellectually, how is he going to keep uh, keep his mind alert uh, in class when, you know, through those times? So these are all the resources that he may need to implement that. And formulate the first step. Discuss the first step with him. What will you do next week when you come? So you're actually formulating that first step. So that's how you prepare to implement the steps. So in Dennis's case, his first step was to read up about different groups and decide which one to join. OK, so that's what Dennis was doing. Then when are you going to do it? So you're asking him, when will you do it? And how is he going to do that search? Maybe through the internet or through friends. So you're actually building the entire One minute. There's too much of sound here. Yeah. It comes, the recording? OK. Sorry about that. Yeah. OK. So uh, Francis, are you here? All right. So what is the first step that Dennis did, Francis? No, over here. What is his action step? He said he wants to go to a rehabilitation program. So what is the first step that he did? Oh, so what did what did they have to do to go to the rehabilitation center? It's there on the slide. Yeah. Ah, so what is the first step he has to do to join a group? What should he do? Fully distracted, huh? You could say, find a partner to okay. All right. So if he needs to go to a rehabilitation group, what should he do first? What should he do first? If you want to buy, if you want to go buy uh, groceries from here, what do you have to do first? Uh, but if you don't know the grocery place, what do you have to do? You should ask or you should find out. Uh, that's what he's going to do. Right? He has to find out which are the rehabilitation centers. OK? Got it? All right? OK. All right. So that is that is Dennis's first step. Then once all of that is done, once he's gone through the entire action plan, he let's say he goes, he goes to the rehabilitation center, he finds out those details, give him a feedback. Feedback is extremely important. Right? Why is feedback important? Because you are recognizing him for his achievement. 
So like I said, even if out of those 10 days, he drank one, uh, two days and 10 days, you recognize that achievement, recognize that effort, okay? Still, you recognize, you, he, he drank 10 days, but didn't drink only two days, right? Still, you give him the recognition for achievement. Isn't two days better than no day? Right? So recognize that achievement. Okay? That, that's important for us to know, to always recognize what they are doing well. Because, and you confront carefully, caring confrontation if they slip or if they relapse. So I said, okay. So you don't do that first. You go back next and say, okay, tell me what happened, Francis. Okay, focus, focus. Okay, so the caring confrontation is you confront what happened, how did it happen, what was your uh, triggers where which made you slip. Okay, so feed, uh, feedback is extremely important. So you're you're looking at what are his slip ups, or if there's any sport or hobbies that are working for him to help him stay clean. Okay. Next part of the action is termination. When all of your goals are met, you come to a place of termination. What is termination, Francis? What is the meaning of termination? Termination. Termination is when you're going to end. You terminate. You end it. Terminator? You've seen the movie Terminator? No. Okay. Okay. It's end to end. Okay. So who decides when to terminate? counseling so uh, you know the, the counseling may say you know i am i stopped drinking for one year i think i'm fine i'm you know i think i can manage so uh, they can decide okay when to uh, terminate the counselee is generally the one to terminate or the counselor can also suggest you know you you seem to have done francis ah okay <laughs> So, counselor can also suggest if he sees um, that things are progressing. And also, you can express readiness for future sessions. You know, invite them and say, in case you need some support, you can always come back for a future uh, session. So, in Dennis's case, um, the person terminated because he was dry for one year. That is, he didn't drink for one year. He started making good grades. His self-esteem improved. He joined a rock band. And, you know, he began to find that his self-worth and significance had begun to build in Dennis's case. Okay? All right? Okay. Now is the time for practical session. Not questions. Practical session. Okay. All right. So now is the time that I am going to be the counselee. You all are going to be the counsellors. Okay, and this we'll we'll do a very uh, we'll start with very simple ones, um, just to go back to what we have were learning the three stages, right? So we will look at only exploration in this. The first part, let's say the assessment part. Exploration, the first part, the assessment part, okay? So I'll come with one small problem. By your questions, you're going to explore. You need to explore what the problem is and some details around the, the uh, problem, okay? All right? So who's the brave one? If you can turn on your cam, uh, so one of the students here will do. Next one, I'll ask one of the other students. Now, right now, the uh, in-person in-person students are the most privileged students. So comforting. So comforting. Okay. So who'll start? Okay. Good. All right. So Prince, Prince, you'll put on your video. So they can also see you. You're on mute. 
Oh, you can't talk, no? When I'm, uh, you can. Oh, is it? But you're, you look, ah, okay, correct. Yeah, you can talk. Yeah. Okay. So, um, uh, Prince, uh, I'll tell you maybe a little about what I'm coming with you so we don't have to do the initial part of it, okay? So I'll come with you, um, come to you for... Um, what? Okay. Um, Small one only, small one only. Okay. So I'm going to come to you with, I'm a mother who has a daughter who is 25 years old. And she has decided to um, uh, get married. Get married. Uh, and uh, to a person that uh, uh, that I don't approve. OK? All right? So um, what I'd like you to do is explore the problem. All right? So which means you may, let's not look at assessment. I think we'll do a problem identification, OK? So explore the problem. I'd like you to explore what I may be feeling about it. So let's just do that much. Explore the problem. and. Uh, identify the feelings that I'm going through. Okay? Very simple. And identify what feelings I have. Okay? All right? So I'm, I'm going to, I'll, I'll start. I'll, uh, we won't do the first part of it. So, um, you know, I've come to help to you because um, I have a daughter. Uh, she's 25. She is uh, right now doing, she's in doing her master's in college. She's found a boy in her class that she wants to get married to. And uh, she still has one more year of her studies. And she wants to get married right now. And I don't think it's a good idea. Uh, I really want some help to understand how I should uh, work through this? What should I do to work through this? Are you concerned? Uh, seems like you're so concerned about your daughter's studies after you. Absolutely, you're right. I'm really concerned. See, she's doing her master's. She has one more year to go. No, I really want her to finish her education because marriage is just going to disrupt all of this. Yes, so I'm really concerned that she's not willing to, I mean, she wants to get married right now. I think it's, uh, you know, I don't know how to, how to convince her. Take your time, don't worry. You take your time. No problem. You're, you, you're doing a good job that uh, you've actually, so take your time. Uh, children does not not obey but consider about our feelings. Yes, 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 it is. That you know, I mean, uh, for 25 years I've actually helped worked with her and for her to just choose something without really having a conversation and understanding how uh, we as family feel about it is uh, absolutely very, very upsetting and disappointing. You're right, yeah. It was so happy with that situation. Mm. Yes, it is. It is, in fact, um, you know, I haven't been able to sleep very well because my mind is always thinking about this. I'm really distressed and you know, even at work I can't concentrate because I don't know what she will do? What if she just, you know, just decides to get married suddenly, impulsively? I'm afraid of all of that. So, um, can I just 
Yeah, yeah, go ahead. You've you've done an excellent job of doing feeling, which you you've helped me to. No, you've only come to the feeling. So come to a keep keep going, keep going, keep going. What else would you ask? Okay, so good. That's something you can ask. How could you ask it in a way that uh, when you say, why do you think like that? Is there another way you can ask that question? You can help. All of you can help him. Help him, help him. Come on. So much of stress and pressure. So, sorry? Thinking that uh, she will get married and maybe keeps you in a place of so insecure. Yeah, um, more than I don't feel insecure, but I feel anxious as to what she will do. So I really want to... Um, uh, you know what? What I'd like to do is actually have a conversation with her. You know, to talk to her, but she doesn't give me a chance. So here, I've given you something extra because you've actually really taken out my feelings. I'm telling, in giving you the next part of it, right? I'm saying, actually, I want to talk to her, but I'm not able to, or you know, she doesn't give me a chance, right? Hmm? Yeah, why don't you help help him? Help him. Where are you? Which point? Okay. Mm. You can say, but you can move into the next thing. Like, even when you're saying, okay, you seem uh, confused or you seem, you're anxious because you're not able to talk to her, right? So try and ask questions that don't give you a yes or no answer. Like when you say, is your relationship with your daughter good? I may say yes, I may say no. Right? Ah. But they need to hear. Ah. So what makes, what was making uh, it so difficult for your daughter? Okay. That's, that's a good question. That's a good question. Yeah. So what, what has made, what is, what has it, what is difficult? What has been difficult that your daughter has not been able to reach out to you? Right. Good. So, so um, the, the thing is, you know, because of this, she knows I don't approve of this boy. See, now I'm giving you another information, right? Uh, she knows I don't approve of this boy, so she's refusing to talk to me because she fears that uh, I will say no. So that's one. Otherwise, she used to talk. I mean, we we have we hold a very close relationship, but uh, she knows I don't like this boy very much, and uh, that's why she refuses to talk to engage with me in conversation. Now, remember what we said. You identified the problem, right? That I can't talk to my daughter, and what do I want? What may be the goal right here? What's the goal? I want to talk to her. That's the goal, right? So I don't want... I, the, the thing is, you don't have to solve my problem. You need to help me solve it. So what is the next question you need to... You need to help me personalize the problem. How are you going to help me personalize... How... Yes, right? What? Good. So 
either you can ask what would you like to do to approach your daughter in a way that she will respond to you because that's what you want right or you can say um you know uh, uh, what 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 would what do you think is the contribution that you are bringing in that's the, what's the contribution that you can bring in that will help your daughter relate to you okay so in that way you're making me think what can i do differently or a question to ask is what have you tried this far that's another question so you know what all i have tried okay so choose any of those questions So I have told her that uh, I have actually told her that I don't like this boy. I have actually told her. So that's one thing that I've done. I have reached out to my sister to talk to her, to tell her that I don't approve. All right. Um, then I have also uh, very clearly told her that um, that this is that you know we can't accept this. So these are things that I have already tried. Do you think of any other way to make her understand what the job is? I don't know. That's why I've come to you. So this is a very common question, you common answer you will get. I don't know. That's why I came to you. So when someone says that. Never give up. The next thing to say, but what do you think? Or, or you can say, <laughs> you can say, give it a moment to think. Take time to think. It's always never when they say, I don't know. Say, okay, now I have to think about an answer. You don't get them to because that's what you're trying them to do to generate a question, right? Yeah. So you can say, you take it. Give it a moment to think. Can you think some more ways that can be Okay, now I'm going to make it more difficult and say, no, I've tried everything, I don't know. One thing you can do then is think about a time when you were able to reach your daughter when she was in a bad place. So what am I doing? I'm going back to some other situation which I've had difficulty with my daughter. How did I do that? All right, so what am I doing? I'm trying to... You're getting me to think about how I dealt with it in the past. Okay? So in that way, you're drawing from there to bring it to this situation. Okay? Go. Yeah, no, no. But you can ask me the question so that you, you know how to bring it back to the situation. So, so I said, no, I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't think so. Yes, when she was in the 12th standard, um, she wanted to take science, and uh, it was a very difficult choice. I mean, sorry, she wanted to take commerce, and it was a very difficult choice. And uh, my husband and I are doctors, so we also wanted her to take science, but. Um, at that point of time, yes, yeah, she reached out and we were able to have a conversation. Yes, at that time I see that happened. So what are the things that helped Good. What did help that? So at that point of time, um, we were, we, you know, we had to also be a little bit patient. And we, we heard her out. We, uh, she came back with a list of things that she felt she needed, why she needed commerce. And she was able to help us see what her likes and dislikes were. So, you know, we, we felt it may be better to just step back and think. But then she, you know, she was willing to have that conversation about why she felt commerce was better. So, yeah, at that time, I see that was a time that uh, we were able, even though it was a difficult time, we were able to make that conversation, yes. Let's say anything we need to talk about. What now you trying to ask? Like, 
So instead of saying, will the same thing happen, you need to reinforce for me and ask me what actually worked there then. You know, or what worked then? And how can so ask me that what worked then? So I may say I was I I think I was a little bit more open at that time. Right? So I've said I was open then. So so you bring it. So, so how can that work here? Or what could you do here? <laughs> how did you handle that situation? Very good. How did you handle that situation that you can learn from? Yeah. Or what would you like to try now? Good, good, good. Right. So then I may say, yeah, maybe I should uh, um, I should be more calmer and uh, approach it a little bit more calmer. I think I'm very angry, so I don't approach it very calmly. So you've got a goal that I should approach this calmly. You can you follow up with how would being calmer look like? What would you do if you're calmer? What would you do differently if you were calmer? Right? You got it? You got got how you got the the gist of it? Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, to calm myself. What are things you would do differently to calm yourself? Right? So now I've come to think I want to have a conversation with her, right? So I've personalized the problem and said, maybe I was not calm, so I need to be calm. So in order to be calm, I have to do these four or five things. And then I can have a conversation. The idea is not about, you know, that I should get her not to marry. That's, that is the problem. The idea is to bring her back to her problem and say, how am I contributing to this problem? That's what you did. Got it? OK? All right. Shall we try one more? Now, counselor, counselee, all, not me. I'm observer. Somebody else. You're the counselee. Huh? OK, somebody from, from the online? Who's the counselor? We have a, Francis is the counselee. Chira, you have been voted. Come on, online students, you you'll have to, you you have to, uh, Ravali? Did Ravali say, someone said, oh, Anand said, Ravali? Ravali? Okay, Nina, Ravali, Chira, these are the names that your friends have. Jackin. Okay, any anyone, come on. There is a, there is a, always a, a, none of the online students are. Yeah. Okay. Ja okay. Jackin speaking. I I can't hear. Jackin. Uh, yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Now we can hear you. Yeah. So Francis is your counselee. Okay. And uh, Jackin, you are the counselor. So the all that uh, you can do the similar thing. Identify what the problem is and maybe come to a place of feelings okay and then we'll take it from there if it goes to personalizing we will we'll do that later okay go ahead hello so I, i'm not able to hear francis
Francis, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Hi, ah, yeah. So, so you're the council leader. Right? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. But one minute, some technical glitches are happening. Uh, one minute. Sure, sure. Hello, Sister Jack, and can I speak? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Sister Jack, uh, I came for a. I want to talk with you regarding a normal issue. Okay. So. Uh, so so I, I am very disappointed with that issue i don't know how to explore how i don't know how to explain to you but i am very stressful because of an issue uh, maybe it's a anger sometime uh, maybe it's a frustration maybe it's a uh, kind of addiction and i, I don't know actually what, which is situation i'm going through Okay, so I see that uh, you're facing some challenges. Sorry, can, can you come again? I I think you're facing having few challenges because of whatever you said, your anger or frustration, you're facing some challenges. Yeah, it's a challenging. Okay. So... Um, Hello. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm. I'll switch on the camera. I think I'm here very much, but I don't know. I'm just uh, thinking. So, uh, I understand that you're feeling frustrated, and um, disappointed because of these things. So, what is it that you would like to change? What is one thing that you would like to see a change or something from this situation? How do you see yourself? Yeah, I, I want to come out from the problems which I'm going through. Okay. But sometime what I'm doing is I only go into the problems. So what I understand from you is like, uh, you are you are getting into the situation yourself. Is that what you meant? I I am going to the situation. You're going through a situation. I'm not going through, I'm going to the situation. Ah, so what I understand is you're getting into the situation yourself. Is it that yes. you meant? Yes, yes. Okay. So is there something that you would like to change about this thing that Yes, that is the frustration. When I am changing, next time I am going again to that same problem. Yeah, I understand that. Okay, so I am not able to hear uh, Pastor Smith. Can you hear me? Check in. No. I am muted here. Okay, so Jackin, what is happening here is that he is beating around the bush. 
right? He's not telling you what exactly is going on. Is that true? Because you're yeah. not getting a grip of what the problem is. Yeah, yeah. Right? Correct. Correct. Because, and this, this can happen because counselees are very, very worried of what they share with you. Okay. So, uh, the, when, you, when you're beginning to feel that you're not able to get to the root or get to what exactly is the problem, you can actually say, um, you know, I'm, I'm attempting or I'm trying to understand. However, I'm really not able to pick up exactly what you're saying. Would you give me an example? Okay. All right. Because he's saying I'm get he's talking about the problem. So it's a very general thing he's talking about. So you need to get into to really identify what he's saying. All that you've got right now is there is a problem. He's getting into the problem. He himself is into the problem. And he's choosing to be. That's all that you have, right? Yeah. And that it's frustrating for him. But for you to really build on, one thing you can do is, you know, come and saying, you know, I, so you're being genuine and saying, you know, I'm trying to understand. However, I'm not able to really pick up exactly. Would you give me an example? Okay. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, from what I understand from our conversation, would you like to give me an example of the situation you are in, Francis? So I will give you so an example. I can help you okay. Okay, I will give you an example which I went through. I am on on that what happened is I am sitting silently. One one person came to me and he said to me one word which I don't like. He said to me, "You learn about yourself, then you teach me." But uh, suddenly I got angry and uh, I punch him. I punch him. The blood came from his nose. But after that, I regret about that uh, way I did that. I not want to get into that. He's my brother. This is my situation. And I'm frustrated about the way I did that mistake. Hmm. Yeah, so this must be really uh, frustrating because you really don't want to do it, but you ended up in that situation. So. Um, yes, um, that time I I not I want to do be, before and after I not want to do that time when I did I want to do that is my problem. Yes, yes. So, uh, how do you uh, see yourself being changed, like a different person? Like, what do you see? I want, I that you I, I want to become a calm person. I not want to be suddenly. You can call in your language, maybe um, short term. Okay. 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 So now you've realized. Uh, Jackin, now when Francis is telling you yeah. something he wants, I know we have not learned these skills, but one of the things you can do is paraphrase what he's saying. Okay. Like, so he said, he gave you an example, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, so, so from the example, you really want to clarify whether you heard what he said was right. So he said, uh, so I, I may say something like, uh, so Francis, you said when you're angry or when you are short-tempered, you respond or you react a certain way and later you regret that or something to that effect because you want to clarify whether you've heard it right. So that's one. The second that he said is, uh, I want to be calm. So he said, oh, oh that's, that's wonderful, uh, Francis. What I hear is you don't want to be short-tempered anymore. You really want to feel calmer in that situation. So you're actually reiterating a certain goal back to him. OK? Go ahead. Yeah. So it's. It's really wonderful, Francis, that uh, you're willing to change and you've realized and come to that point. So what do you think uh, that uh, you would like to do to see yourself changed? One thing. Sorry, I didn't got the question. Can you come again? So uh, what, what would you like to uh, do to initiate or see yourself 
changed any one thing to see yourself in a better position a better position in the sense um, i should not get angry if anybody is killing coming to kill me also i want to change like that position okay jackin so what he said is i don't want to be angry he didn't tell you what he wants he told you what he doesn't want ah, right ah, so what do you do great you told me what you don't want would you tell me what you want you need to build what on is it that he, on the want what is he want okay now after he tells you what he wants you need to build on what that is so he may say yeah i want to be calm or i want to be uh, i want to be uh, i want to have peace okay now this is a very broad goal i want to what does that mean so he needs to build on so i said okay if you want to have peace tell me one or two things of how peace looks like how does peace practically look like to you so that's how you build on getting him to understand that this is what he wants to do okay yeah so go back to i don't want uh, i don't want to be angry so start from there yeah so uh francis so what would you like to do because i understand clearly what you don't want to do you don't want to get angry so what would you like to do francis I want to get angry at every time, but when I get angry, nobody can control me. That is my problem. So, what you would like to do in sense like right now, I can't like uh, I won't get angry. But in case some situation comes, then I don't know what to do. That time I get angry, even I don't have control on me. I don't know. What, um, like that is my answer. So he's gone back to the problem again. Okay. He's again said, "I don't want to be angry." He's saying the same thing again, right? So you may have to reframe your question. So the question I may ask is, Francis, you said you don't want to be angry. What would you like to be instead of being angry? So, so um, since you mentioned that you don't want to be angry, even in such situations, so uh, what would you like to do? instead of being angry if it is a man i would like to hug him and say sorry to him if it is a girl i will hold my hand sorry but i should to come to that position most of the times i won't come to that position easily i will give that person and i i will leave okay so jackin now he has given he has actually said something right he said if it is a man i will hug him if it is a lady i will go and apologize something he said that right yeah. now he's come up with a solution isn't it yes. so what do you do here you appreciate that you say um, you know you can say you know um, you know that's wonderful you came up with uh, with an understanding of how you want to do that right so you're you're encouraging the fact that he's come there but he also said at that point i don't i won't get an idea to do that so that's his next problem yes yes okay yes. so now begin to explore how would he how would he come to that stage if he could come to that stage what would happen or how would it look like what would he imagine now this is all imagination yeah right yeah. so so you're again building that goal much further go ahead so that is really uh, wonderful and great about you francis that you have come to this idea of uh, you know being friends but uh, what i want to ask you is in that situation what would you think differently what would you want to do different that situation nothing thought will come to my mind only destroy him okay so this is where you figure out what is he thinking at that time now the doing happened right the doing he can't do now there is thinking he said i just want to think how i can kill him what did you say yeah, uh, how i can destroy him so is this a is this an issue with the thought yeah 
Yes. Yes. Right? Now that is what needs to be. Remember we said you are looking at the false belief. So, so maybe what you can do is in, okay, Francis, in the situation when someone is facing you or when you are going through a situation, what are some of the thoughts that you have? Begin with, begin with that. So dispute, so disputing the thought. Yeah. So first identify the thought and then coming to figure out how he can dispute the thought. Yeah, go ahead. We'll take another three, four minutes to finish this. Yeah. So, um, if you could uh, uh, think of what would I say? Like, you can share. You can share. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Jacqueline, uh, you can bring about that saying that okay, Francis, I heard you say that you know whenever you're in a situation like this, you your thought is that you want to destroy them. Is that so? Okay. Okay, and then say if that thought could change or if you were able to change the thought into something that is more calmer more peaceful like what you want what would it be uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. So, so, uh, francis that uh when you see that person you wanted to destroy that person so instead of that thought what would you think differently in that situation when that thought arises particularly on situation is coming because of talking talking more from my side it won't come more talking from my side it will go only actions so it's depend upon that person how he's talking with me she didn't understand your question reckon <laughs> no i have to so you may need to repeat till he understands your question he didn't understand your question yeah right so you may need to repeat that yeah so uh so from what i uh heard uh francis so you when you see that person you feel like destroying that person immediately so that is your thought process from what i understand is that right yes yes yeah so in that thought process uh when you see that person what would you like to change your thinking to If it would be a constructive thing, uh, it's actually depend upon the situation. Each situation, each things I thought. Like recently, I share an example to you that is a um, very terrible situation to him and me. We both got right. We we both got equally, uh, but somehow then became a word fight and all. Mm. Okay. Only one thing is, from their side also, I need peace. It will be from my side also, it will be peace. Okay. If from their side, voice is raising. From my side also, voice is raising. Yeah, so uh, is there something different that you did previously not to get into such a situation? No, I never when been like that. Only in my school time, maybe some teachers will come and punishment. That's all. And uh, my grown up and all, nobody will come and say, You nobody can handle me. That kind of situation. So, yeah. so Jackie, he still didn't answer your question. Yeah. Right? And that's what happens. Sometimes they they either they don't understand or they avoid the question and they go back to the same problem again and again so one sec so you know it is to continue to persist yeah okay so one sec so um so i heard what you said um i'd like to know you said in this situation i know that there are other situations that may be very different but in this situation you said you want to destroy the person if there was another thought you could think of which would make you feel calmer what would that thought be Will that make you calmer? That so, if you think that let him do what he wants to do, it will make you calmer. Okay. 
you will keep silent. Okay, so one thought is let him do what he wants to do. Okay, okay. What could be another thought? So I'm building more thoughts. He said one, right? So I'm building more thoughts. Okay, if if you could think of it in a in a way that will help you be calmer, not him. You don't have control about what he does. If you wanted to be calm, what would you think of differently? Rather than destroying him, you said, I want to destroy him. If you had a peaceful thought, if you had a, uh, if you had a compassionate thought, what would that thought be? Okay, so when you're doing that, what are you thinking in your mind? When you're doing that, when you're getting up from your place and going, what are you doing? What are you thinking? Okay, so what are you thinking? Yeah, I need to, I don't want to. Okay. Okay. The time I'll be the person of hunger. Then when he's the next person, he's talking to me. Okay. Francis, I'm coming back because that was not very clear to me. I asked you if you had a calmer thought at that time. You said you will walk away. You will get out, right? So when you are getting out, what would you be thinking that will help you to get out of that room at that time? What would you be thinking at that time? What are you saying to yourself as you're getting out of the room? Yeah, so in this situation, when you have got out, what would you be thinking? So I'm asking you to imagine. I know it went a different way. I'm asking you to imagine if when you walk out and when you're getting angry, what are you telling yourself that will help you walk out? <laughs> Wonderful. So you, you're telling when you're getting angry, you're saying, I'm a child of God, I'm representing God. I think that's what you said. You are the ambassador of Christ. What would it make you feel when you're thinking about that? What would you be feeling when you think of that? What would you be feeling when you think that you are a child of God, you're an ambassador of God, and you're walking out and not being angry? What will you be feeling? What will you be feeling? Yeah, that's huh. I feel like Jesus, um, not, not Jesus took the pain of me. Okay. So if Jesus took your pain, what would you want to do? Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. So the next time you come with someone, someone comes like this to you, is this something that you can think about? You just said you will think about it. Uh. So what you're telling me is that if you were able to do it differently, you would do this. That's what you're saying. I know you've never done it, but you're saying if you were able to do it differently, you would do this, isn't it? Right. So I'm saying next time when someone comes to you, is this something you can try? Yeah? Would you feel calmer and not get into a fight at that point of time? Okay. So we've come to that part. All right. But, you know, you see how how you may need to stick to something till you get them to answer. Don't get derailed because sometimes, you know, they're also not in that place. Excellent. Great job, Jacqueline. Thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Francis. All right. Good going. Huh? Question. Uh, okay. We'll, we'll, we'll cut the call and then we'll... Uh, yeah, okay. All right, thank you everybody for joining in. We'll keep having more of this. So all of us have to pitch in, all of us have to keep learning. God bless, thank you very much.
Yeah.